It was one, one of those lovely emails you get from uh, your American manager with uh, you know, a couple of scripts attached and a synopsis and a letter from Rosemary Bright, the producer, um, saying that they were, they were shooting it and they provide a whole load of background information about how the, 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 the story came about. Um, and the Aboriginal uh, mythology that uh, characters like the clever man and the, the Hairies within the stories, these sort of superhuman individuals, um, uh, where those stories came from. So there was a, it was a very kind of, yeah, it was a very full uh, email uh, with a whole load of background information. Um, uh, which you take in and then you read the scripts and I read the scripts and I thought it was just a very, you know, strikingly kind of uh, original drama. I don't think I'd, I'd read anything like it um, and uh, I really liked the feel of the role. So um, I needed no persuasion. As an actor, I invariably choose just because of writing, really. I always think that if you have really good writing, then there's bound to be very good people behind it on a director level, on a production level. Um, and uh, yeah, so so I said yes, and then you know it was uh, three or four months later. Well, or maybe maybe not that long. A couple of months later, we started shooting in in Sydney. I play uh, Jared Slade, who is a, a media mogul. Uh, he is a very powerful, um, wealthy man. Um, and he has his, his tentacles spread far and wide. He's, you know, he's into property, he's into media, he's into pharmaceuticals, farming. Um, but he's a, he's a self-made man. And, um, and I suppose uh, in some ways uh, a man of the people, we, we use Richard Branson, you know, Virgin's uh, CEO, as a, as a kind of blueprint, which felt right in lots of ways. Um, because he's um, he's a very uh, approachable. He's not remote. He has a kind of good common touch about him, and, and Slade's like that as well. I suppose the only difference is that that Slade is um, uh, doesn't promote himself quite in the same way as Branson does. I don't mean that negatively, but you know, if they, if they're you know. If there's a hot air balloon, Richard will be in it. Um, but um, you know, Slade doesn't. He kind of keeps more in the background. And that's partly because he is, you know, he has a number of things going on, and I think he quite likes to be uh, invisible. Um, but yes, so uh, uh, a very wealthy man who, um, at the beginning of the series, is help helping fund a. Uh, a medical center within the zone, this ghettoed area where the, the Harry's um, and more of the impoverished people from society have been placed, have been contained. Um, and so he's using his own money to try and help them with, with medical facilities. Um, and I suppose his, his role within it is he's trying to find a, um, a solution to the racial divide and the racial tension. Um, and he's putting his energies into that, and uh, you know, it's there's a there's a benign aspect to it, but there's also a slightly worrying aspect because uh, of the science that he's starting to investigate to try and extricate that DNA that makes the Harrys what they are, and and then you're starting to get into morally slightly uh, dangerous territory. It's always a guessing game, and you 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 know you never you never know. But all I can say is the themes of it are 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 very universal. You you know you can you you sometimes in a situation that I find I, myself in now I can say well no but it really is, and you sort of you you tentatively reach for for um, uh, echoes around the world. Uh, but there's 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 nothing difficult in this series. It's so uh, clear. Um, you know what the themes are and they should be relevant for wherever you live in the world sadly because it's about racial divide and it's about really at the heart of the story it's a relationship drama but it's about how do you live with the other in society those that look different from yourself have a different language from yourself and we you know listen we've got swathes of people who are, who are walking Europe trying to get away from their, their own countries and, and um, find an existence in, in other countries. So um, that's what this drama's about. That's in a nutshell what it's about. It's about um, this, this different group coming in that um, the majority population are very fearful of and they want to exclude them and they want to blame them. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it echoes back into 
into Aboriginal um, uh, issues and what they suffered when you know uh, you know when the the white people arrived. Um, but it's not it's not specific to that. Uh, but it's specific to Aboriginal folklore, as I say, the, the, the clever man and the Harry's are figures that are taken out of Aboriginal folklore, and I think woven very, very um, subtly and cleverly into a kind of uh, futuristic drama. It's set, uh, you know, a few years indistinct, but it's 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 in the future. Um, yeah, and it conjures up, a, you know, it's a, it, it feels like it crosses genres, the drama. It's very hard to place it. I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't quite know what to call it other than it's underpinned by, um, by the relationships. It's about brothers and mothers and husbands and wives. Um, uh, and and that, that keeps it, yeah, very, very grounded. So although there are the, these many different elements to it fundamentally that's really what grounds it and what it comes back to and hopefully why we care about the people in it.